Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome welcome back to immunology course today we are going to start again the basic concepts in immunology today is lecture 4 okay so in last class we ended up with uh, the dendritic cell is the bridge between innate and adaptive immunity today what we are going to see that how that innate immunity and adaptive immunity are bridged together and what is happening and how it is going. Okay. So, the first slide, the first slide we are talking about circulating lymphocytes encounter antigen in peripheral lymphoid tissue. If you see the picture carefully, see this is the place in the leg, okay, in the foot actually the infected peripheral tissue. So, there are some infection here. Okay. So, what happened? In infection, if you remember, in infection, the first thing happened is the innate part of the immunity, and this is the inflammatory response. In inflammatory response, we already discussed. So, all these macrophage dendritic cells they pick up the tissue or I mean pick up the infected organism, in infectious organism, and then it bring to the nearest lymph node. Okay, so, from the site of infection, the antigen presenting cells, mostly the dendritic cells are taking them to the nearest lymph node. And we already know that lymph node is spreaded all over the body and wherever the infection, here in this case we saw that the uh, feet is the, uh, foot is the in, uh, site of infection, it can happen any part. So, that from innate, as a result of innate immunity, the infectious organism is processed and bring to I mean brought to the nearest lymph node region. In this case it is here. Okay. So, in this lymph node it will go and we will discuss what is going to happen in the lymph node and then it will go to the circulatory system goes to heart and from that heart it is circulated all over the body. If the site of infection is only one place it will take care there and if it is all over the body then it will take care by the blood. So, like uh, after inflammation and the dendritic cells bring them to the nearest lymph node. So, how the lymph node look like? This is a cross section of lymph node the schematic diagram. Okay. So, if this is the lymph node and here there are two channels. one it is called afferent lymphatic vessels where it is coming from outside entering into the lymph node and other is going out after the immune reaction happened. This is called efferent lymphatic vessels. In this lymph node cross section, if you see there are different parts, this part this pink color part it is the medullary part of the uh, lymph node and this region is cortical region. Okay. If you remember the color code that we always show that B cell is yellow in color and T cell is blue in color. Okay. So, here this blue and yellow are meaning the same part like blue region means this region is packed with T cells okay. and this color I mean this pink region is medullary cord macrophage and plasma cells are there. What is plasma cells we will discuss later. Uh, we already told actually like B cell is converted to plasma cell and then only it can secrete or it the plasma cell is actu actually producing the antibody molecule and secrete it. So, here this yellow circles this is called germinal center. Okay. So, what happened in previous slide we have seen that the dendritic cells are bringing the pathogen here and then it is going come in, uh, entering inside then in the blue region there are lots of T cells and these T cells this is already discussed this slide this T cells there are many 
Okay, the specific T cells specific or particularly interacting T cells which interact with that pathogen will find it and attach to it. After attachment they get the signal and they proliferate, proliferate means they increase their number. Okay, this activated T cells then help the B cells to produce antibody and B cell also after getting the signal it multiply converted to plasma cells and plasma cells produce antibody which is secreted to the system and peripheral system that goes to heart and then gradually distributed all over the body. So, wherever the infection will find the antibody is going to do its own job. Okay. So, not only lymph node there are two types of lymphatic organ one is called primary another is secondary. So, another important lymphatic organ is spleen. Okay. So, spleen also if you see the cross section of spleen here also you will find two different zone one is blue zone another is yellow zone. So, blue zone is full of T cells and yellow zone is full of B cells. Okay. So, there are different part. So, the germinal center is also here. So, it depends where infection happen which is the nearest uh, lymph node or uh, lymphatic organs. Say for example, if you go here. So, if there is any infection in teeth or mouth or in throat we are very much acquainted with that what happened we heard like tonsil swells right tonsil is located here. So, tonsil is taking care of all this region infection in this region in the mouth cavity throat. So, any infection happen. So, that time the macrophage and dendritic cells bring the infection to the tonsils. Okay. So, similarly it is taken care by the nearest lymph node which is I called in the last class or in last one of the last lecture that it is the local thana kind of thing. So, it is taking care immediate part. Okay. So, lymph node, spleen, tonsils are there. So, besides this in case of the mucosal region where there is no lymph node or there is no direct connection of blood. So, what we also have several system or several uh, mechanism to handle the infection in that cases like mucosal surface, surface have specialized immune structure which take care of the infection of that region. Simi what we have? We have mucosal immune system or mucosa associated lymphoid tissue it is called MALT or GUT associated lymphoid tissue GALT which includes tonsil, adenoids, appendix, Pierce patches, nasal associated lymphoid tissue and bronchus associated lymphoid tissue. In uh, short we call MALT, GALT, NALT or BALT. Okay. So, they are taking care by a specialized cell called M cells. Okay. So, this is a specific example of the spare patch, but pair patches are covered by epithelial layer. Okay. You can see the epithelial layers are there which contain a specialized cell called M cells which have the characteristic of the membrane ruffles. So, these ruffles are there. So, here also we can see there are packed of T cell region the blue region we have germinal center, dendritic cells are migrating in between. Okay. So, there they take care of the infection if there is any in the mucosal region all the say uh, gald, malt everywhere they have this kind of structure. So, what happened I am um, uh, revising back or uh, repeating the same thing what happened? in the site of infection immediately the innate immunity take care. Inflammation happened that inflammation as a result of that inflammation the pathogenic organism brought to nearest lymph node where it interacts with T cells. T cells get activated it helps B cell B cell also activated both way by directly by the antigen or and at the same time by helper T cells then they convert it to plasma cell produce antibody. Okay. In many times it happened like if you go to doctor what happened 
doctor first like there is a pain or there is wound something happened muscle pain doctor check whether the gland is swelled or not because inflammation uh, will make the gland will swell if there is a good amount of infection and there will be a pain in the lymph node also or lymph node region. So, from that pain if pain is there as well as uh, in uh, as well as there are some wound we can say inflammation happen. So, that means infection is there if there is no swelling just pain happen by some uh, heat to the muscle or by some overwork that time inflammation is not going to happen. So, from there doctors can understand infection is there and according to their prediction and uh, other symptoms they decided what should be there for the treatment whether antibiotic is required or antibiotic is not required they will decide. Okay. So, this is the starting of adaptive immune response. So, if we consider at the beginning just the B cell part or antibody production part what happened. So, it is not like innate immunity within hours we already see that it takes days to week what happened. So, first antigen will come to lymph node B cells there are many B cells they will see specific B cell with their receptor will recognize the antigen same way specific T cell receptor will recognize between there will be a crosstalk between B cell and T cell as well as with the antigen that will activate the B cell which is going to convert it to plasma cell and the B cell receptor will be produced in a different form because there will be no transmembrane domain. So, it will be now secretory. So, the B cell receptor in the form of antibody same molecule same specificity will secrete to the peripheral system. So, here we are showing a graph in this picture this is a very important important in that sense this is the response how it goes and this particular graph is also going to I am going to tell you that this is the major principle or th on this principle or this phenomena what we are going to explain now are the base of immunization or the basis of immunization. So, I am trying to explain this graph what is happening say for antigen A. Okay. Suppose we are considering antigen A and assume for the timing we will discuss later how assume for the timing in blood serum we can measure how much specific antibody is there. So, antibody against antigen A we can measure we there are several techniques. So, suppose one of the technique is used to measure the specific antibody concentration in blood against antigen A. So, what happened suppose antigen A is injected this is day 0 okay. and every day if you try to measure or if you measure the specific antibody presence of specific antibody in serum what we will see up to almost 7 days there is no increase in antibody against antigen A and after that it gradually goes up okay, and it reach a plateau that means antibody is not going to increase anymore. We injected antigen A once at day 0. So, up to certain day it will increase and they it will not increase anymore and if we keep on continuing the measurement of antibody what we will see it is gradually going down okay, going down at this moment suppose here we are injecting antigen A again listen carefully we first injected antigen A then we measure the antigen A specific antibody in serum and we see the pattern of this graph. So, first 7 days almost there is no increment then it is increasing then reach maximum stay for some days and then going down gradually. When it is going down at this moment if we inject the antigen A again what is happening you see this is the nature of graph nature of graph means this is the nature of antibody concentration in, in that particular individual. So, what is happening if you see in the beginning it took almost 7 days okay. next time if I inject same antigen within very short maybe one or two days it start increasing 
not only it takes less time to produce antibody, it produces much more. Okay. And if you see it stay for long time, okay. this is called secondary response. So, first one when our body see any antigen or any pathogen first time, this is the first reaction, this is the first reaction, but second times if it sees the same antigen again, the reaction is much quicker and the amount of antibody production is very high. So, two different. So, if I now ask you a question what is the difference between primary response and immu secondary immune response, there are two points right. One the lag phase that means, first point where it goes up the lag phase is more it is about 7 days here it is much less 2 to 3 days. Okay. This is number 1. Number 2 the amount of antibody production in the primary immune response is much less than the secondary response, the amount is very high and this is independent of antigen. Okay. It is not that antigen A if happen this way it is going to work for antigen B also. That is why here what happened along in the second time injection of antigen A antigen B also injected. You see in case of antigen B again it took it took uh, 7 days okay, to start with and again it goes up to certain level. So, for every antigen first administration is the primary response. So, secondary response of antigen A is not doing any effect or not having any effect for antigen B and this is the basis or this is the principle of immunization. What we are doing in immunization? We are doing immunization, we are giving our body to the exposure of the antigen for primary response. So, in primary response body see it, it takes time make a specific antibody. So, what is going to happen when it is going down? It is never going to come down to the basal level. Some of the B cell uh, will convert to memory cell that means, that it will remember that okay, who entered in our body. So, that one is that is that population of B cell the memory B cell and memory T cell are going to stay in, in, in our immune system. So, next time if it, if it comes it will not take much time because they already know it is how it looks what to do with that. So, immediately they will take care of that and with much less time they goes up and make more production. Okay. There are two more important thing happen one I will say now another I will come later in, uh, in the during the discussion of antibody. What happened this secondary immune response it is not only that it is quick and much more aggressive another thing is happening in the secondary response the quality of antibody or the specificity of the antibody is increased. So, better quality antibody or more specific antibody are going to found. So, in secondary response it is always better, it is uh, uh, always better. So, that is how vaccination or immunization work. So, we prime our body with the prime uh, with the antigen at the first time and in secondary response it goes high and can take care of our uh, infection much quicker and much uh, specific way or more effective way. So, what is the effector mechanism? Effector mechanism is what will happen, what, what uh, this antibody is going to do, because antibody is produced. So, more antibody is produced, so how it is going to handle the immune system? We already know that there are four type of pathogen, right? The pathogens are like virus, which is intracellular, then intracellular bacteria or protozoa like Listeria is uh, intracellular mycobacterium, mycobacterium lepri, mycobacterium tuberculosis, they are intracellular bacteria, there are some protozoa, protozoan parasite like Lismania donovani, which cause calazar, which grow inside the macrophage, plasmodium falciparum, you know it grow inside the RBC. Similarly, which is very common the extracellular bacteria, parasites, fungi, okay. any kind of tissue infection is most of the uh, time it is extracellular the streptococcus, clostridium, trypanosome is a protozoan parasite, then parasitic worm the big 
one cystosomiasis ascaris and here is the, the disease I mean disease the viral disease like smallpox, flu, chickenpox, then leprosy, leishmaniasis, malaria, toxoplasmosis they are the disease I mean this is the corresponding uh, pathogens. So, summary so, if I say summarize this we do not have to remember all these thing if you remember it is good like which organism cause which disease, but in general we have to remember there are four types one is virus pathogen that antibody can handle pathogen is the virus intracellular bacteria protozoa or parasite extracellular bacteria parasites fungi and parasitic worm which is also extracellular. So, immune system or the effector function of antibody is going to handle all these four or all these four different kind of organism or pathogen. How they are doing if you uh, uh, go back the so virus, virus is going to take care by cytotoxicity of the cell, cytotoxicity mostly by NK cells and CD8 T cells. Okay. I will come later, but for this slide cytotoxic T cell also called CD8 T cells, because cytotoxic T cells express a specific receptor which is C D 8 which is present only in cytotoxic T cell. Okay. Similarly, helper T cell produce another uh, receptor which is specific to helper cells are C D 4. So, many times instead of telling helper T cell we also say C D 4 cells same way cytotoxic T cell also we call uh, C D 8 T cells. C D 4 T cells are the helper cells C D 4 sorry C D 4 T cells are the helper cells C D 8 T cells are the cytotoxic cells. So, virus is mostly taken care by N K cells which we already discussed by and cytotoxic T cells or C D 8 T cells by cytotoxicity what it is doing elimination of virus infected cell or metabolically stressed cells. Intracellular bacteria or parasite ILC 1 innate leukocyte 1 or TH 1 cells we will see what is that which eliminate the intracellular pathogen by activating macrophages. Similarly, mucosal barrier is taken care by ILC 2 and TH 2. The effect is effector function is elimination and expulsion of parasites recruitment of eosinophils, basophils and mast cells to handle the infection. Extracellular immunity is taken care by ILC3 and TH17 cells. What they are doing? They are eliminating the extracellular bacteria, fungi, and recruitment and activation of neutrophils, which is taking care of the uh, innate immunity part. Okay. So, now what antibody is doing? All these thing is going to activate B cell, T cell, and B cell T, T cell is going to help B cell, they produce antibody how antibody is going to help us from to get rid of the infection or infection related material, because some extracellular bacteria they produce toxins and that toxin create problems like diphtheria toxin, cholera toxin, okay, tetanus toxin, then pertussis the whooping cup, okay, all are not direct bacterial is causing anything. So, they are producing a protein molecular toxin molecules what they are doing. So, they release the toxin molecules these red circles, the red circles are the toxins. Normally what they are doing this toxin molecules we are attached or bound bind to receptor which is already present in our cells. So, bacteria dimmer produce the toxin to kill us we our cell actually have the receptor which can bind these toxin molecules. Okay. So, that is a very interesting mechanism those who are interested how these toxins work you can go and read like diphtheria toxins how they go enter and change um, or attack the uh, elongation factor and stop protein synthesis cholera toxin uh, change the sodium potassium channel and a lot of fluid loss is happening. So, tetanus toxin cause the um, problem in muscle construction. So, their mechanism or molecular mechanism are very interesting you can go and read study not for immunology just for 
general interest. What happened? So, these toxin molecules go and bind, they internalized by receptor mediated endocytosis and cause the damage or disease. Okay. So, if there is any specific antibody which raise against this toxin, what is going to happen? This toxin is not going to be free anymore. Okay. The antibody is going to bind them. If you, you see, this antibody is just captured them. Okay. So, what will happen? There will be no free toxin to bind to the receptor and this particular toxin is captured by the antibody. So, upon infection body is going to make specific antibody against this toxin and when antibody is amount is good enough in our body. So, no free toxin will be there to bind to cell receptor and cause the damage. Okay. Same way this is called neutralization this method. So, it is that means, the toxin is neutralized by antibody this process is called neutralization. Same way macrophage we know that they can eat bacteria by different TLRs, okay, mannose receptors, but sometimes what happens that efficiency is not good. Even after that innate immunity if bacteria grow inside our body and population increase, so the disease will continue. So, what happened if it is still continuing for good enough days like 7 days or more then antibody against this bacteria will be produced. So, what will happen just like the toxin molecule uh, antibody is going to coat the bacteria. Okay. So, the bacteria is big here uh, bacteria is big here and so this bacteria will be coated by antibody. Okay. This process is called opsonization clear. So, first one is neutralization second one is opsonization. Another important method uh, important uh, strategies there in our immune system which is called complement activation. What is this complement activation? There are proteins which is heat labile, but they are very much part of the innate immunity they do not have specificity. What is going to happen as soon as bacteria is coated by antibody the complement protein which is present in our blood okay, they will go and attack them this is called complement activation. So, antibody is doing three things first neutralization then opsonization then complement activation complement will be taught separately uh, very interesting mechanism how it works how our own cells are not affected by this complement, okay. but they are very very bad proteins. Okay. So, human complement can kill any other um, uh, mammals uh, cell, okay. so they are very specific our own complement is not going to do anything to us. Similarly, others complement system uh, like if it is cow or goat any complement system if you uh, mix with our blood that will kill our own cells. So, they are non specific highly non specific but individual organism had the protection from their own complement system. Okay. So, coming to the previous slide here neutralization, opsonization and complement activation I will go one by one. So, after neutralization of the toxin molecule what happened macrophage is there macrophage I always already told that it is uh, cleaning mace or eating our own thing is there macrophage has if you see this yellow line macrophage has a receptor for antibody. Okay. So, they by this receptor this whole complex will attach to the macrophage surface and they will taken up by phagocytosis or receptor mediated endocytosis. After taking them they will be degrade inside. So, there will be no toxin molecule anymore okay. and this whole protein is going to be recycled for our own I mean the macrophage own protein synthesis. Same way opsonized bacteria which is coated with antibody also be endocytosed or phagocytosed by macrophage and degraded inside the macrophage. So, no bacteria will survive. So, that that's, that is the way the bacteria will be cleared from the system. So, this is opsonization and end product is same both are lies product of the antibody and toxin. In complement activation what happened? In complement as soon as the antibody coat this bacteria complement protein come and sit into this bacteria. 
Okay. So, they will make a channel. Okay. There are proteins which are like this. So, this suppose this is one, one protein, one subunit of the protein. So, one subunit, then two subunit, three subunit, and then gradually they make a channel. It is just like a pipe. Okay. So, if you may, uh, take a pipe and put inside the cell what I mean say suppose a ball is full of liquid, you put a pipe inside it, what will happen all the liquid from out cell will come uh, from that ball will come out. Same way, so they make a channel inside that, okay. so individual protein will sit one by one okay. and how it is happening, how it is happening, so they will make one protein then 2 protein, then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 something like that. So, they will make a channel or hole in it. Okay. So, they will make a hole in it. So, that hole, what is the effect of that hole? So, all the cytoplasmic material of the cell will come out. So, the bacteria will lies. So, these three possible way are there. Okay. So, these three possible way are there by which this antibody can take care of microbial infection either the toxin or the whole microbe. Okay. So, this is called effector function is that clear. Okay. So, today I mean in this lecture this is the end. So, see you in the next class and uh, you just again I am repeating go and study it is very simple and things to remember just go and if you remember the image you can remember the whole immunology bye for